Hello, digmates. I'm Dominique, and today we'll talk about macros. Oh, this is the night. Yeah, not that kind of macro. While macronutrients allow you to run farther, the macros I'm referring to can help you type work or even game faster. So what are these macros? How can they benefit you? And what are the different ways that you can use them? Simply put, a macro is a sequence of instructions that can be executed automatically at your command. It's like when you snap your fingers and someone makes coffee for you. On your computer, a macro can be pre-recorded sequence of events. On Photoshop, for example, you can create a macro that applies a series of corrections to an image. But today, we want to focus on keyboard macros, which are sequences of key presses and how they can make your life easier. Here are 13 examples of macros that can save you a lot of time. Number one. You could create a macro that types out your email address when you press a key. Number two, macros are also very helpful in command-based programs like AutoCAD. Our digmate, Red Axis 72 has a layer dedicated to all the commands he uses, so he doesn't have to take his hands off his mouse. Three, macros can help with text selection too. You can have macros to select a whole word or a full line of text, like our digmate, object, object. You can even use macros to paste snippets of texts you use frequently. For example, a paragraph from Lorem Ipsum. Number five, another great use of macros is to insert emojis. You can create a custom macro that opens the emoji picker and inputs the text that brings your favorite emoji. Number six, on social media, macros can be used to input your most used hashtags. Number seven, if you regularly need to compress files, macros can automate the process. Number eight, you can even have a macro to open your regularly used apps at once. Number nine, or it can also be as simple as pressing a key to open your calendar and a new event window. Thanks again for this suggestion, Sleepy Blue. Number 10, if you frequently edit images, you can use macros to perform specific editing tasks, such as resizing or cropping images to a specific size or shape. Number 11, another example shared by one of our digmates might be the simplest one, but it's pretty ingenious. It's a comma and then a space, so he doesn't have to press it every time after the comma. He also has a macro for each of these symbols, but with the cursor located at the center. And our 13th macro is from a digmate who shared his boss key. It's a macro that brings up his desktop with his communication apps open so he can check it if he has messages from his boss. And it also pauses his music playback. And these are just some of the ways you can use macros. Sure, you might be thinking, I don't need a macro to do all of these tasks, really. I can have my assistant do all of that. We're sure your assistant is incredible too, but the thing with macros is that they don't make typos. This leads me to another benefit of macros. They add precision to your work. Once you have set the macro correctly, you'll never misspell a website or an email. This will also give you extra time to review other parts of your work and ensure nothing is out of place. Once you get familiar with macros, you'll find yourself thinking, I could do that with a macro. Well, you could, and you should. So how do we set up our macros on Basecore? First, Open Basecore, go to the Macros Editor, and click New on the top of the screen. Create your new macro name. Let's do something simple and go with an email. Choose an action. In this case, it will be a text. And in the text box, enter your email and add it to the timeline. Now you can see your macro in the Timeline Editor and even preview it. Of course, you can also use the option Record Macro, which will save every action you perform. Since the arrays can also change layers, input mouse clicks, and control media, your macros can do it too. They can even reproduce macros within other macros, in macros, and other macros. Don't forget to save changes every time you make a macro. As soon as it's saved, there's one more thing you need to do. Place it on your keyboard. So, what are our recommendations? If you use a few macros, place them on keys you no longer use, such as Enter, Caps Lock, and Backspace. If you want to use a lot of macros, you need a dedicated layer for them. That way, all the keys in that layer fulfill a similar role, saving a lot of key presses. 
It's worth noting that while macros can be a major time saver, they do require some time to set up. Just keep this in mind as you begin to create your macros. With these nifty little shortcuts, you can now navigate your computer like a pro, impress your friends with lightning fast keystrokes, and maybe even have time to take up a new hobby. May we suggest underwater basket weaving? And that, my dear friends, is the wonderful world of macros.